Having a great Hell's Kitchen service is tough, as one small mistake or miscommunication can be all it takes to go from a solid service to a bad one. There's a reason why the Black Jackets in Hell's Kitchen are usually so respected, because it's truly not easy to have consistently good services, and it's obviously even harder for the less talented chefs to have a great night in Hell's Kitchen. But every once in a while, a weak chef steps up to their game, turning in a Dave Levy-like performance, almost seeming like a different chef overnight. What's going on guys? I'm Flint Masters, and today, we'll be looking at the greatest dinner services by bad Hell's Kitchen chefs. Now first things first, the chefs I've chosen aren't Raj levels of bad, but they're not exactly known for being great chefs either, and their amazing performances are definitely surprising to see. Before we begin, please be sure to hit that subscribe and like button, as this is a place to be for long and short form HK content. With all that said, let's take a look back at the best individual services turned in by bad chefs. Bloody hell, here I go again. Even though Trev made it to the final four in season 8, to say he deserved it would just be flat out wrong, as he obviously benefited greatly from being on Hell's Kitchen's weakest cast, and not quite being as bad as the other terrible chefs this season. In fact, he would have absolutely been the boot at the final 9 after tanking on the Garna station, but was spared thanks to the red team having a great service. But after this train wreck performance, Ramsey gave Trev one last chance and put him back on the blue team, and despite the toxic behavior from the likes of Russell and having a rivalry with Rob, Trev seemed to be right at home in his first service back in the blue kitchen, having a flawless service, and single-handedly finished dinner service after the other three blue team members got kicked out. With orders flying into the kitchen, Trev on appetizers. Trev, that risotto, yeah, it tastes fantastic. Keep everyone like that. Three chefs have already been kicked out of the kitchen. Get out. Hi, chef. Get out. He is about to join them. Bye, because the halibut. Which leaves only one chef left to complete dinner service. Uh, hi. The whole service just fell on my shoulders. I'm ready. Good to go. Ooh la 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 la. What on Trev? Like a big light just kind of opened in a dark sky, and I'm getting it. Best of the worst tonight. You, Trev, last man standing. Glad you're back on the men's team. It's very hard to stand out from the crowd in the early dinner services, with there being so many chefs in the kitchen. However, one of the most notorious times a bad chef absolutely dominated service came at the final 15 of season 11, with that being Dan. The guy not only completely owned the meat station that night, but this came off the heels of being on probation, and in general being a clear weak link within the blue team. And yet despite this amazing performance, the team still decided to put him up for elimination. I'm on the meat station tonight riding solo. Spotlight is on me. I'm right behind you with three Wellingtons. Are delivering their last set of entrees to the pass. Dan, the way this is cooked perfectly. Thank you, Chef. Good job, Dan. Thank you. The perfect lamb. Yeah. Service, please. Dan. Yes, Chef. Perfect. I know. I cooked it. Dan, you're doing awesome, buddy. Thank you. Winner. I'm like Charlie Sheen. All I do is win. The person that we should be putting up right now would be Dan. What? Everything I sent out was beautiful. I see how it is. Put me up on the heels of perfect service. Let's see how that ends. Dan. Back in line. Uh, that's right. You ran the section single-handedly. One thing I'm going to confirm is you can cook. Thank you, chef. While I think people over-exaggerate how bad Lacey was during season 5, to say she was a good chef is simply not true, but she would make an amazing first impression on the blue team in her first dinner service. After getting switched to the blue team after the episode 4 service, the red team was relieved, and the blue team was terrified, as the red team had been making it absolutely clear that she sucked and was a cancer, and with this knowledge, the blue team didn't exactly bring her in with open arms. Chef Ramsey throws us a curveball. Give us Lacey. Why would he eliminate our and then give us the other team we were just on the verge of losing our last piece of dead weight. We feel there's a chance that we may have just got another piece. Inside of me, I'm saying, Lacey, it's a cancer. But despite this, she proved her worth right away, as she not only had a great service, but was the unofficial leader of the blue team. Again, say what you will about Lacey, but this was a pretty cool moment to see her prove everyone wrong. Back in the blue kitchen, a leader is emerging. Guys, I'm going in like a minute and a half. Yep, let's do it. Come on, guys. Her food up. She was very vocal, asking people how long on this. Jay, how long? And how long on that? Chicken, two Wellington, where you at? Keep going, Lacey. Keep Come going. Down. Robert, how you looking on the tuna, baby? Really trying to make it a great service, because I don't want to go home. Come on, guys. Sticking with good first impressions, we have Robin's first service on the blue team at the final 10 dinner service. In the previous episode, Robin became an HK villain for life with her insane outburst, but did indeed show some serious passion as well, begging Ramsey to give her a second chance on the blue team, and he would grant her that wish after eliminating Patrick, having her take his place. And this decision proved at least off the bat to be the right one, as every chef on the blue team other than Robin had a bad night. And yeah, I can only imagine how shocked the red team was when Robin 
won the best of the worst reward. I am not going down. Flatbread working hard, guys. Hello, Robin. Flatbread, I'm cutting. Flatbread. Good. Let's go, Robin. There's only me left in my kitchen. Robin, let's get the momentum. Let's keep going. Come on. You have two spaghetti working, yes? Yes, chef. I got two okay. spaghettis working right now, chef. Oh, man, I can't. Boys, please take a couple deep breaths and get your ass back in here now. We get the two risotto ready as well, too. Yes, okay. How do I say this? The only person who did well in the men's scene was a woman. In my Worst Chef video, I made a controversial pick for season 7, as I chose Salvatore. One of the reasons why it was probably my most controversial pick is due to the fact that he literally won the Best of the Worst reward for his Episode 4 service. And the thing is, he started this night with a mistake, making it seem like he was going to have another bad service and likely be eliminated. But shockingly, he not only turned it around, but absolutely controlled the blue team on the Tough Fish Station. Again, say what you will about Salvatore, but the fact that a guy like him, who would get flustered over the simplest of things, would go on to produce a service like this is pretty crazy. Crazy. Four snapper. Yes, chef. Go now, go now, go now. Behind you, chef. Salvatore! Come here, you! Yes, chef! Salvatore! Snapper's cooked perfectly. Thank you, chef. Don't send me any more. I want, chef. <laughs> I was like, woo. And in the blue kitchen, Salvatore is hoping to do the same with his first entrees. Salvatore! Yes, chef! Salmon, cooked perfectly. Thank you, chef. Salvatore not only recaptured himself, but hit the damn ball out of the park. Salvatore, you can cook. Thank you, chef. Stop downgrading yourself. Trust me, you can cook. Just don't stop. One of the more forgotten redemption arcs in Hell's Kitchen is Krupa's performance during the premiere service of season 9. Krupa was already seen as a weak link within the red team after she served up a terrible signature dish. First off, it doesn't exactly look appetizing, does it? No. No, it's like you've got four bits of <laughs> on a plate, splat. <laughs> Spices are raw, bland. My dear Krupa, yeah, that is crapper. He thought of me as a joke. I'm better than this. I'm so much more better than this. Usually after a bad signature dish like this, the chef either hides in the background or ends up having a bad opening night as well, possibly even leading to a first boot. But that was simply not the case for Krupa, as she actually took over Lisa's station to finish the app strong and dominated the meat station for the entrees. And while the red team unfortunately wasn't able to complete service, Krupa's amazing performance essentially single-handedly won the red team service over the blue team. But man, in retrospect, I bet Krupa wishes she wouldn't have done as well, as Elise could have certainly been the first boot had the red team lost. Can no one make a risotto? I'm on it, chef. Krupa's jumping on it. Krupa? You're gonna have Krupa replace me? I'll kick Krupa's ass with a blindfold and a broken arm. Walk in with your risotto! Has delivered her risotto for Chef Ramsay's approval. Who made that risotto? I did, Chef. Yeah. Delicious. Thank you. Good job, Krupa. Oh, oh, Krupa's back. Krupa is ready to lead her team once again with their first entrees. Let's get these entrees out together. Who cooked the Wellington? Perfect. Yes, Chef, thank you. So let's go with the Wellington, please. An entree leaving the kitchen. Finally, let's go. The losing team tonight with zero entrees leaving the kitchen is the blue team. Say what you will about Gabriel, but his Hell's Kitchen journey was pretty interesting to watch play out, as he looked like a guaranteed early boot to nearly earning a black jacket. After having a rough start in Hell's Kitchen, he would find his groove, but then went back to his inconsistent self during the mid-portion of the competition, and survived two straight close eliminations, with Sanja being just a bit worse than him overall at the final 10, and he only stayed over Richard at the final 9 due to being half his age. And before the final 8 dinner service, even Gabriel seemed to know that he was pretty much a dead man walking, as he appeared to have no confidence. But after a pep talk from Ramsey, Gabriel would not only have an incredible performance on Garnish, but he would lead the blue team to one of the greatest services in Hell's Kitchen history. Nothing would make me happier to see you rise and absolutely nail this service tonight. Two. Okay? Yes, Chef. I have to start leading more and start pushing more. Give me what's up right now. Two Wellington, one chicken, two salmon. Yes, yes chef. chef. Garnish. Garnish coming in 10 seconds, Chef. Let's go then. Hurry up. Speed up. Walking with Garnish. Nicely cooked, Gabriel. Yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. It's two halibut followed by two salmon, two Wellington. Walking with Wellington Garnish in 20 seconds. And teamwork are at an all-time high. Blue team. Yes, Chef. All of you, come here. Hey, hey, you guys, come up here. Seriously. I've had some good services in my time in the house kitchen, but nothing quite as good as tonight. Great Thank job. You, Thank you, well done. Team. And Gabriel, welcome back. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. 
Ah, oh, I'm so excited, man. I killed it tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching this video of the best services by Bad Hell's Kitchen Chefs. Let me know if I missed any other services in the comments below. And of course, be sure to subscribe and like to support the channel. With all that said, take care everyone, and I'll see you next time. Get out of there.